Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker and in today's video I'm going to be talking about the story of the NBA bubble to this point and it is the, as of the recording of this video, undefeated Phoenix Suns. But really quickly before we get started, if you enjoy content like this then subscribing is a great way to keep up with the channel and leaving a like rating is also a great way to let me know that you're enjoying the content that you're watching and it helps the video out a ton as well. With that said, let's go and get started. Okay, so as I said in the intro, as of the recording of this video, the Phoenix Suns are undefeated and within one game of the eighth seed in the Western Conference and certainly well within the range that they need to be in order to force a play-in tournament for that eighth seed with only a few games remaining in the bubble. And so in this video, we're gonna be talking about how exactly this newfound success has come about for this team because they had one of the worst records of any of the teams that were invited to the bubble and to now be in position for the eighth seed is pretty extraordinary, but also what it means for their future moving forward, what we can learn from this small sample size in the bubble in terms of what kind of team they're gonna be moving forward. Now, when we start talking about the Phoenix Suns, the first player that we're always gonna go to is Devin Booker. And we're looking at a huge run of success for this team, especially relative to how good they've been over the last couple of years which is not very Devin Booker's statistics in the bubble are fantastic and from a scoring standpoint it's up from an assist standpoint it's up the shooting percentage looks awesome but the two key numbers here at least in the bubble are the turnovers and the three-point percentage the turnovers show that he is being incredibly efficient as a playmaker especially for a guy that has as much offensive responsibility as he does and I think from that we can learn that this pairing with Ricky Rubio is really beneficial for Devin Booker to have a real point guard beside him for the first time in his entire career really has been incredibly, as I said, beneficial. We kind of knew that throughout the season, but when you're looking at a primary ball handler and a guy that scores and play makes for the Suns as much as Devin Booker does, to have such a low turnover number is really, really important for him. And then the other part of this is the three-point percentage, because that's really the only per-game stat that looks kind of questionable for Booker. But what that shows me is that he can be even better than he is right now because he can shoot even better from three-point range than he is right now. So as well as he's playing, as well as the Suns are playing, there's still some upside left for this team in the bubble because Devin Booker can play even better, which is pretty incredible to think about. And then the other guy that we got to talk about here, of course, is DeAndre Ayton. And I talked about him in the Suns' What's Next video that I did relatively recently. And I think that he really is where everything is going moving forward for this Suns team. Everything revolves around DeAndre Ayton and how good he can be and how much he can develop. And he was in kind of a weird situation with the game yesterday where he missed his test that he needed to be able to take in order to play. And then he showed up late, he didn't play as many minutes because he missed his test. And so that's a bit of a concern from a maturity standpoint. But on the court, he clearly makes an incredibly positive impact for this Suns team. Now, his bubble stats really aren't anything crazy. Maybe you would expect because they're playing so well and they're winning so many games that his stats would be over the top. But really, they're not compared to what he had during the regular season and what was a relatively small sample size during the regular season because of his early, uh, early season suspension. But it's just having that kind of scoring balance to have an option to go to inside is one of the reasons that he was picked number one overall in a draft class that has become incredibly stacked. Guys like Luca, guys like Trey Young, they realized maybe we don't need any more perimeter playmaking. Maybe we need someone to score inside like DeAndre Ayton. And you're starting to see flashes of that promise that they were excited about when they drafted him. And again, that is so key for this team moving forward because they've got plenty of perimeter scoring and perimeter options offensively. But to have that inside option offensively as well can make a huge impact on this team. And you're starting to see that in the bubble despite his averages being a bit down. Now defensively, he as well as 90% of the players on this Suns roster have a pretty long way to go defensively to be any kind of top half of the league team on that end of the floor, which they're going to need to be to kind of raise their ceiling as a team. But all promising signs for DeAndre Ayton, at least being on the floor and how that impacts winning, even if the per game stuff isn't great compared to his regular season stats. And then the other part of this that I think is really important to pay attention to is the complementary options around the guys that, in my opinion, are the two key guys, obviously, and Ayton and Booker. And I mean, we already talked a little bit about Ricky Rubio, but on the wing specifically, and a little bit in the backcourt as well, the importance of having shot making around those two guys is so, so critical. And we're really seeing that now 
in the bubble. That's why they drafted Cameron Johnson as a shooter. That's why going back even to the Josh Jackson pick, that's why they picked him up. That's why they drafted Mikhail Bridges. They know that they need wings that can shoot and can defend. And I think they're starting to find guys like that. Mikhail Bridges is a really good defender with a developing jump shot. Cam Johnson has had a good rookie season as a shooter, needs to develop other parts of his game, but he's had some good performances in the bubble. A couple of surprise guys on the roster as well. Cameron Payne and Javon Carter. I didn't even know Cam Payne was in the NBA anymore, to be completely honest with you. Had no idea he was on the Suns roster. And then Javon Carter, they got as part of a trade last year from Memphis. Both of those guys combined are shooting over 50% from three in the bubble. And up to this point in their careers, they both combined been about a 35% shooter from three-point range. So they're shooting way better, perhaps unsustainably well in the bubble. That could be a contributor to their success. But it just kind of shows moving forward that if they do put shooting around this eight and Booker combination, they can have a ton of success. And another part of this to keep in mind as well is Kelly Oubre isn't even on this team in the bubble. He's hurt. He had an awesome season prior to being injured, and he just adds another wing to throw in here, playing either the two, the three, or even the four at times as well for the Suns team as a guy that can score, take that scoring load off of Devin Booker. All these things are good things, and if they can continue to develop those wings and those backcourt players as complementary options around Booker and Aiden, this could be a sign of things to come for this Suns team moving forward. And it's interesting because they kind of have this like March Madness type feel to them now as a team where they know they have to win pretty much every game. They know that they're an underdog to make the eighth seed and they're just shooting the ball extremely well right now. And it's such an interesting and a cool feel uh, around this team right now. And personally, I think it would be awesome for them to make the playoffs or at the very least get into that play in game, which seems pretty likely at this point because it would be really important, not only for the players individually to get that playoff success, but also for the franchise to have some kind of success to hang on to moving into next season. They would certainly be a sleeper team for next season to potentially make the playoffs a kind of a dark horse team, a team that a lot of people uh, would be talking about kind of in the background as making the playoffs and what's gonna be a really tough Western Conference next season. But I think just relative to the, all the, you know, the lack of success that this franchise has had over the last couple of seasons, getting into the postseason would be huge for this group. And so really what this shows for this team moving forward is if they can continue to play in a way similar to this, they won't have to worry about Devin Booker trade rumors and things like that. And again, just like I talked about in the What's Next video, the development of DeAndre Ayton is going to be critical. And at least on the offensive end, they have a blueprint here that I think can really work. You've got Booker and Rubio as guys that can play make in the backcourt. You've got Oubre, Cam Johnson, and Mikhail Bridges, guys that can defend and shoot on the wing. And Oubre can do a little bit more offensively than just shoot, but still kind of in that 3 and D type mold. And then in the front court, you've got DeAndre Ayton, who if he continues to develop, should be a really not necessarily dominant offensive force, but a really good offensive force inside. And offensively, it appears as though they have a really good plan. Now, defensively, there are strides to be made by every single player on the roster, with the exception of someone like Mikhail Bridges, who I think is a really good individual defender. He'll continue to improve on that end. But everybody else that gets minutes is going to need to continue to grow on the defensive end, other than, like I said, Mikhail Bridges. And you can throw Javon Carter in there as a good defender on this roster as well. But if they can continue to develop both sides of the ball, they could be a really interesting team over the next couple of seasons. And this this run of success specifically isn't probably going to mean that much to them this season, even if they do make the playoffs. I mean, that's good for them, but they're probably just going to lose in the first round. But it shows that they have a formula that works. And sometimes that's all a, a, a franchise needs and a roster needs is some proof that what they're doing works and what they're doing will move them in the correct direction. And that could end up being what this run in the bubble means for the Phoenix Suns. It could end up being huge for them moving forward for this group. So I'm excited. It's awesome to see all these different storylines in the bubble, whether it's them or, or TJ Warren going off or Austin Rivers having 40 plus points. I feel like we've had some crazy, crazy performances in the bubble, both individually as well as as teams. And the Suns are certainly up there right now in terms of a team that is playing extremely well to this point in the bubble. And yeah, there you have it. That is going to be the end of today's video. And I thank you all very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. And thanks again as well to everybody that came to the live stream yesterday. It was super fun to just kind of hop on on a Monday for, for about an hour and just talk to you guys about basketball. I kind of want to do that a little bit more often. Uh, and I hope to do that moving forward. So thank you to, to everyone that showed up there. That was super fun. Uh, and like I said, you guys will see me again on Thursday. We're talking about the future of the Sacramento Kings. So, so be sure to be there to check that out. But as I said, my name is Tucker. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I will see you all next time.